Okay, are there any matters that we need to get on the record? Yes, sir. Not mistaken, Your Honor. Okay. Because I think Mr. Parliament needs to put some on the record. Okay. Have you consulted with your attorneys? No. no. Okay, I just want to just make sure. Um, anything that you say, particularly if it relates to any facts in the case, potentially could be used against you. So just, you just need to be careful, sir. But yes, sir. A while back ago, I tried to get rid of my attorneys. On the advice of the courts and other people, I went on and went through with this. But I'm telling you now, I am not happy with what's been going on. I'm not. I just want that on the record. I want it on the record that I am not happy with what's been going on. Here. I'm not. I'm also be sitting over there with them. Oh. I'm also be sitting right over there with them. I'm not happy with this here at all. I don't feel that I'm getting represented in no kind of one percent way at all. I want that on the record. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's on the record, and yes, we did have the discussion previously, uh, even though my recollection was that it was more so towards Ms. Dixon than Mr. Thomas. Uh, but we have it on the record that you're not happy with what, what's happening right now. Um, I mean, we're not at a point at all uh, where I can, uh, can make that consideration whatsoever. Court of Appeals, if there is a conviction, obviously we'll take a look at everything that the attorneys have done and decide if they have represented you appropriately in this matter. Okay. I would ask, yeah, Mr. Partner, yeah, if you would just move up when you're sitting down. All right. Anything else on behalf of the defendant? No, Your Honor. All right. Mrs. Harper. Just reminding everyone that we will be breaking in probably about an hour. It's right before three. Oh, and then I need yes. to run downstairs. Thank you for the reminder, Your Honor. Okay. All rise for the jury. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, <clears throat> Detective Hughes, before lunch, we were watching that video state's exhibit X. Did that appear to be uh, a fair and accurate copy of your interview with Anthony Sleet? Yes, it did. With those uh, <clears throat> breaks where he's alone edited? Yes. I want to talk about a few things on there. Mr. Sleet mentioned something about there's cameras, you could see, if you looked, you could see us talking, the guy that gave him the card. Were you ever able to locate any surveillance video that showed that happening? No. Now, Mr. Sleet, though, um, did he have a stable address? No. Did he have a job? No. What did he do for a living, did he say? Just transient, stayed here and there. Panhandler? <clears throat> yes. Did he have a history of drug use? I believe he did, yeah. I'm pumped by a little bit of alcohol. Okay. Off and on. Um, we saw somebody else come in, um, another detective, come in and talk to him and show him some documents. Who was that? Detective Sheeline, Brian Sheeline. And where was he employed at the time? Columbus Police Department. Is he Columbus. also a homicide detective? Yes, he is. Was he involved <clears throat> in this investigation? Initially, he just assisted with the search warrant of the residence of uh, Rachel Anderson. Is there a reason that you or other detectives would have somebody else other than you or Detective Welsh, somebody that's really working this case, show a photo array or photographs to a witness? Yes. That what would is be, that? be the purpose of somebody not involved with the investigation or unknowing of what we're investigating or who we're investigating to show a photo array so there'd be no chance of. Uh, 
influence on the pick. Okay. Now, at that point, <clears throat> had you identified, um, had you identified the defendant as a suspect? No. How did you put together, or I guess I should say, who put together the photographs that were shown to Mr. Sleet? I did. And how did you put those photographs together? So we have a mugshot database. Uh, with that information, we have a subject, the focus of the array. Um, we put in physical descriptors, facial hair, lack of hair, hair length, eye color, race, gender, all that. And it'll create a, uh, it'll populate uh, candidates that are, are similar to that, you know, and within that we pick out, you know, the six people and then the program will randomly put them in a or different order. So you can't put the person you're looking at number one, so the computer will do it kind of random. Okay. <clears throat> and so had you, uh, we heard Mr. Sleet give you some descriptors. Yes. You, are those the things you use to put these photographs together? Yes. You may. I'm going to show you what's been previously marked for identification as State's Exhibit P. Um, can you please tell the jury what that is? That's a photo array and a photo array procedure form. It, is that uh, anybody in particular's photo array? Who, who was this given to? This was... Who was shown this array? Who Detective, got this array? Detective Sheelan showed it to Mr. Fleet. Fleet. Mr. Fleet, did you call on that in the interview? I probably did. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, and so we saw Detective Sheline writing on something. Yes, is that this, what this, this is? was the document he was writing on. Does it appear to be a fair and accurate copy of the, um, the array that was shown to Mr. Sleet? Yes. Now, when he went through there, did he did he definitely pick somebody? No, he didn't. I mean, he, he hit on number one, and then he hit on number six. Um, so I, to me, that wasn't a, a strong pick. Okay. In spite of that, did you do anything to look into those people as potential suspects? We look into them briefly just to see if there's any potential there, and there wasn't anything. Okay. And at one point... Um, I think when you're talking to him, did you make, did you misspeak about the time? Yes, I did. I, I caught that. It was at three o'clock or three twenty-two p.m. And so I, I jumped ahead six hours. So. <laughs> okay. So just to be clear, when you were talking to him about three twenty-two, and he says, "I thought it was dark. I yes. thought it was dark." Had you made a mistake? Yes. Yes. And did you clear that up with him later? Yes. We also saw you. Um, put some gloves on and swab his mouth. Yes. What was that for? Uh, collect his DNA standard. Okay. And was he cooperative? Yes, he was. Very cooperative. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. I'm going to show you what we have marked for identification as State's Exhibit N5. And inside, I've also labeled the second envelope N5. Okay. Is, can you tell us what that is? Those would be the swabs, the container for the swabs. Okay. And how do we know, um, are, are, did you document it in any way, or has it been marked by the lab? The property room, the property number. Property okay. Tag. Okay. And would these be the, that standard you took from Anthony's sleep? Yes. Why did you collect this from him? For uh, any evidence uh, that we, obviously there's evidence in the lab waiting to be uh, processed to compare him or eliminate him with that evidence that we collected. And does that appear to be in the same or similar condition as when you collected it, minus anything the lab has done to it? Yes. So at this point, had you, when you gave him that photo array, you had not identified a suspect, right? Nobody. At some point, which we'll talk more about later, did you identify Anthony Pardon as a, a suspect? Yes. Did you make any attempts to then show Mr. Sleet an array or a, a similar set of six photographs with Anthony Pardon in them? Yes, to try to locate him. Were you successful? No. 
as part of um, when again I had asked, did he have a, an address where you could locate him? No, he didn't. A job you could go pick him no. up. Um, as part of this case, did we ask you to try to locate him? Yes, and I actually put a uh, an ID alert out on him. For that way, if you had any contact with any law enforcement, they would, my name was on there attached to that uh, ID, the ID alert that they would contact me 24-7 if they could come in contact with him. When did you put the ID alert on him? Uh, soon after Mr. Pardon was identified. Okay, so we're talking not just recently for trial, but even back in yes. 2018. Yes, yes. Were you ever notified that he had been picked up and made available for you? No. So then when we asked you to try to find him and bring him in here, did you make any uh, discoveries about uh, Mr. Sleet? Yes, we found out he passed away. When did he pass away? Uh, 2000, 2018, September, October, or August maybe. Okay. All right. So I know we jumped ahead a little bit to February to talk about Mr. Sleet. Um, however, we only talked about surveillance from January 28th. Um, had Rachel's bank card been used on dates after January 28th? Yes. Did you do the same thing uh, that you previously described for the jury where you went and tried to obtain surveillance? Yes. Were you able to obtain surveillance at every location then? Uh, the following locations, not all of them, I don't believe. Okay. I would like to talk about some of the ones okay. that you were able to get uh, surveillance from. If we could start, uh, Your Honor, we will need the, uh, I should apologize. Is it all still on State's Exhibit L1, that thumb drive we used earlier? Yes. Okay. And all of the surveillance that we're going to cover today is on that exhibit? That's correct. If we may have permission then, Your Honor. You may. The court could give us a moment to try this again. Sure. Thanks. I apologize, we thought we had it set up, Judge, and... It happened. Okay, here we go. All right, so now we're going to go to January 29th of 2018. We'll start at the Fine Fair Food Mart. Uh, do you recall where that's located? Yes, it's on Cleveland Avenue. And where is that in proximity to the um, addresses we had talked about before? Uh, it is further uh, west and north, a little bit north. Okay. It's not as close as the Main Street locations. Okay. What we're going to do for purposes of the record, we're going to go to um, this. I'm going to move it to right around. 310, and if you would narrate and or use the pointer for things that are that we should be looking for. Um, anything, um, does this one have a time and date stamp? Yes, it would be January 29, 2018 at 312 p.m. Not in military time this time? No military As time. As evidenced by the p.m.? Okay, um, and we're going to play it here, uh, and it would be 7 minutes and 13 seconds on the bottom counter. We'll let it play here, and if you would let the jurors know... I think we have a few seconds here. Uh, 
This is the person that comes in to use a credit card or a debit card. The ATM is over in this area, would be over in this area over here out of, out of view. Can you keep your, you drop your voice a little I'm bit? I'm sorry. <clears throat> the ATM is out of view over in this area right here. But this would be the person that came in to use the ATM, the debit card. Okay. Uh, and does he appear to have anything on his face? Yes. He has a low portion of his face concealed. Okay. And did he have anything in his hands? Uh, there was uh, one of the views. You can see uh, the debit card right there. Any, and in the other hand, could you tell what he had in the other hand? I believe it's a glove. Okay. We are going to go to <clears throat> So this is view is from the front of the store to the back with the ATM right there. All right, so we're going to fast forward to about the three minute 13 mark again. So this is still in the same store, right? Yes. Okay. And so the bottom counter is at about 7, 29, 30 right now. And did you put, use a pointer? I apologize. I was watching the counter. Where is the ATM? This is the ATM okay. right here. And there he is using the uh, debit card at the ATM. Okay. And did this... A transaction match up with Rachel Anderson's bank records. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to do what we did before and just sort of move it in front of the jury. As I move it through here, about how long does he spend at the ATM? I was there for quite a few minutes. Do you recall how close this market is to one of the locations where the defendant was known to stay? Yes, it's in walking distance. And which residence is it within walking distance of? Uh, his sister, Deborah Pardon. Okay, the one on uh, 15th? Yes. Okay. Next up, I want to talk about a place called City Trends. Okay. Where is City Trends located? Northern Light Shopping Center off Cleveland Avenue. And about how far is it from this location? Uh, maybe two or three miles north. Is it heading further north? Yes. All right. Uh, and we're at City Trends. Was this another location where you were following up because of Rachel's bank card? That's correct. Um, so we're going to... We're going to move, this one is a longer video, so we're going to start at around 23.32. What, where are we looking here? This is out the front door to the parking lot. Okay. Um, and as any persons of interest, if, if you could just tell the jury. Uh, walking in, not this person with the hat on, but I'm sorry, with the hat on right here and right here. This would be Deborah Pardon, and that would be Anthony Pardon. Now, when you collected this, did you know their names? No. Did you determine them later in the investigation? Yes. Okay. So when you first gathered it, that's what you have right there? Yes. Um, we need to... All right, so we're going to kind of skip. Was there also a camera that covered uh, the registers of the checkout area? Yes. I'm going to... Come, we'll come back to that, but since we're on this video, uh, later in this video, do you see the two of them exit? Yes. Okay, so we're going to move forward to that's good, 40, about the 49-minute mark. That child just picked something up on the floor. <laughs> and that would be the same two leaving, the Deborah and Anthony. Okay. And does uh, the man you later identified as Anthony Pardon appear to have a bag in his hand? Yes. Okay. Now we mentioned that there is another camera, so let's take a look at that. It's labeled as camera three. As it starts to play, what area of the store is this? Uh, the checkout. 
and this will be the back of the store. The back of the store? Yes. Okay. We're going to fast forward to around the 43 minute mark. 4248 is where we're starting it. Um, as the people that became of interest to you in the investigation um, enter the frame again, if you could point them out to the jury and kind of narrate what's happening. Uh, I believe that would be them right there. Keep, you, you keep dropping your voice, sorry. I'm sorry, that would be them right there. Okay. And that would be them approaching the checkout. Was there anything that either one of them was wearing that became of note to you later in the investigation or things that you might have been looking for later on as you had people search? Obviously, I'd be looking for the jacket, the hat, and the same clothing, the hat and scarf and jacket for her. back in the store here, and Deborah is at the checkout. Okay. What does he appear to be doing right now? Uh, he's killing the in his face. And he's checking out the cash register. Is that object, does that object still appear to be on his face? Yes. And does this continue? Does it take them several minutes to check out? Yeah, it takes a few minutes. Okay. Um, and again, did this correspond with a charge on Rachel Anderson's debit card? Yes, it does. Uh, and the timestamp matched or was uh, pretty close? Approximate, yeah. All right. Next up, uh, was there a transaction at DSW? Yes. Where was that located? DSW is at Easton. Okay. Uh, where is that in relation to city trends? Is going to be further north and east of. Okay, so this one is another one of those players. We have selected channel 23 for purposes of the record here. What, what part of the store does this camera cover? Uh, the entrance. Now, on this one, um, it's kind of hard to see, but it is a... Hmm, sorry about that. Does it have a date and time stamp on it? Uh, it's got the date of 129, 2018, and the time is military time, 1747. I like how you listen and you're saying military time now. Thank you for that. Now, when you went back and compared it, did this match exactly? Or was this uh, time off by a few minutes? I think this was off a few minutes. Okay. But still uh, corresponded to a charge on her yes. bank account. Yes. All right. So we're going to move... Are you there? Okay. Apparently, Ms. Van Kulen has already moved us where we need to go. Uh, for purposes of the record, it's around 1748. And again, if you would please, as anything of note starts to happen, narrate that for the jury. <coughs> That would be them getting ready to come into the store right there. And when, you say, when you say them? That would be uh, Deborah Pardon and Anthony Pardon wearing the same clothing they had on at City Trends. About how long was this after the purchase at City Trends? Uh, it was within the hour, I believe. Okay. Uh, and again, is this a similar situation uh, from City Trends where uh, there are more than one camera available? Yes. Okay, yes. so we're going to skip the middle section, okay. uh, and at some point, are you able to see them leaving? Yes. 
So we're going to go ahead and move to that if we can. <coughs> This is around 17.57 and 20 seconds for the record. There's Deborah, and there's Anthony, and they're getting ready to leave the store right there. Was there anything covering his face there? Uh, I believe it might have been pulled up partially. Okay. Was it tough to see? Yes. All right. So I'd like to switch to uh, channel 31. Okay, this is going to take a second. We have to... And which part of the store is uh, this camera or channel covering? Check out. All right. So for the record, we're going to stop, or we're going to start playing it at 1753.55. I think it's going to take us a few seconds, but again, please uh, let the jury know when uh, there was something that you found of evidentiary value on the screen. <coughs> Check out. Does she have on the same hat we've seen in the other surveillance? Yes. Stepping up to the register right now. We're going to speed up the, we're going to make it go just a little bit faster. Who do we? And there's Anthony in the picture now. Anything notable about his clothing there? Uh, wearing the same clothing he had on earlier at the other store. Those are the DSW still frames. Okay, so um, still photographs of 
part of the video we just watched. From the surveillance, yes. And um, the people that you had pointed out on there that you later identified as Deborah uh, and Anthony Pardon, can you see them in these photographs? Yes. And do these appear to be fair and accurate stills from the video we just watched? Yes. Okay. Uh, next up, was there a transaction at a Kroger? Yes. Saldana Boulevard. Sal Saldano? Saldana Boulevard. Where is that located? That is at Wilson and West Broad Street. So help us figure out where we are now. We've been up, so now the DSW was up near Easton. Yes. Where is this Kroger? This Kroger is on the west side. Uh, you say the west side. Um, any, what's the closest main crossroad? Georgesville and Broad, Wilson and Broad. Okay. Um, we uh, are going to go ahead and play this. I think this one starts pretty much right away, so if you would okay. narrate for us uh, anything this. you found of evidentiary value? Yes, this is a checkout, the self checkout, and this is Deborah. She has her face completely concealed. Ms. Van Kulen's going to increase the speed for us so that we can get through this here. Yeah, she's over to the checkout on the left side of the video right now. Are you able to tell what she was purchasing or trying to purchase? Uh, I don't recall. Okay. I, I don't think you can tell by the video. Okay. All right, she stepped over to the self-checkout on the right side now, right there. Now, if I recall, she has a problem with the checkout or scanning the card and asks for assistance. While she does that, she attempts to conceal her face even more. Okay, that was going to be my next question. Right there. What, uh, if anything, did you observe her doing to conceal her face? Pulling the scarf up over her face. And did this transaction match up with Rachel Anderson's bank records? Yes. Okay. All right. Were you able to obtain any other surveillance video for the card usage on January 29th? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Where else was that? Hollywood Casino. Okay. Uh, did we have some issues getting it to play today? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you have an opportunity to observe the surveillance from Hollywood Casino? Yes, I did. What, uh, if anything, of evidentiary value, if you, you can go ahead and stop that, I'm sorry. Uh, what, if anything, of evidentiary value did you locate on the surveillance from Hollywood Casino? They're quite similar to the Kroger as far as uh, backtracking on their surveillance, so they actually found the ATM that she was accessing. And from there, they followed her backwards through the casino all the way to the time she entered. So that's how they was able to track her. And you say she? Uh, Deborah Parton, I'm sorry. Now, when you collect, again, similar question, when you collected City Trends, DSW, um, the Kroger on Sol, Sol, Sol Dano. Dano, thank you, and the casino, did you have any idea who those people were? No. Kind of like when you got the originals with Anthony Sleep for the 28th. Yes. Okay. Uh, but it wasn't until later you figured out who they were. Yes. Um, and what, if anything, did she do to try to conceal herself on those cameras? Uh, when she approached the ATM, she stepped off to the side. And if I remember correctly, with her right hand, she's pressing in the code, standing off to the side. Okay. All right, moving on, was Rachel's card used on January 30th of 2019? Yes. Did you go through the same procedure where you tried to get surveillance video? Yes, I did. Did you get it from uh, the Fine Fair Food Mart? Yes. That one is a tongue twister for me. Um, is that... Okay. So have we already seen some footage from this location? From the day before. From the day before. Okay. So uh, did this match up with a uh, transaction with Rachel's card? Yes. So her card was used at this location twice, actually? Yes. Two different days? Yes. Um, on this one, we're going to start with channel 9 here. Um, and 
fast forwarding to seven minutes and eight seconds. If you'll narrate what we see here in entering the frame. This is uh, the person identified as using the debit card, concealing his face as he approaches the store. Okay, you say concealing his face. What did you see him doing? Uh, pulling a scarf up over the lower portion of his face. Okay. We're going to move to the inside cameras now. And that actually is walking from the north to the south to the store. Okay. We're going to fast forward to about 8 minutes and 46 seconds. You'll tell the jury. And we have the same person with a lower portion of his face concealed walking through the store and another video see so approaches the ATM again. Okay. We'll go ahead and move to uh, that same camera camera angle. I apologize, but later on I should have asked and I apologize. Does this have a time and date stamp on it? Yes, it's uh, January 30th, 2018 at 6.24 p.m. I should have remembered this is the one not in military time. Um, and did this match up with the time on her bank records? Yes. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and fast forward. There we go. And there he's leaving the store. Same person. Did he ever have anything in his hands? Uh, that went by pretty quick. I know there was gloves in his hands that time. Okay. No, I mean, it, it is January. It's cold out. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. He's putting gloves on right there. Okay. Um, and then I think what we're going to do is check out the camera that's on the actual ATM. Okay, so... There would be the ATM. This is a view from behind the counter. We're going to fast forward. We're going to have 8 minutes and 48 seconds on the ticker at the bottom. And that is him right there waiting <clears throat> to access the ATM. Yes, he is. Okay, and as I move through this, do you recall how long he was there? No, that's another one. It takes a few minutes. Okay. All right. I think we're at our last bit of surveillance. Was that the only one you were able to get for January 30th? Yes. Was her card used yet again on February 1st? Yes. Where was that located? Uh, it was at another market on Main Street. This one, it was just east of downtown near uh, I believe South 18th. Okay. And was the address here 850 East Main? Yes. <clears throat> what is this camera angle showing us? It's from the back of the store, from the front to the back of the store with the ATM right there. Does it have a date and time stamp on it? Yes, it's uh, January 1st, sorry, February 1st, 2018, at 1319 and 3940 seconds. What time is 1319? Military time. Oh, 120. 119. Translate, <laughs> Translate please. 119 here. And again, if you could use your pointer, the ATM. He's back air, and again, face is concealed. Uh, and does does he stay there for quite a while? Yes, yeah, there for quite a bit of time. Okay. <clears throat> so Miss Van Kulen is just sort of uh, fast forwarding in front of the jury to show he's still there. Um, if you want to start, we'll start the next two videos, and if you could just let us know does. What do we see back at the ATM? I uh, still there.
All right, we're going to skip that. We'll skip that one. All right, and then we will go to um, the fourth video down. Let us know what we're seeing. Yeah, he's still there now. He's walking away from the ATM. And if I remember correctly, he goes out. There's a side door here. It exits out to the uh, west side of the store, then the main street. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Now this one had a time and date stamp on it. Was that one accurate like the other one? Yes, I believe it was. Are you uh, sure about that? Uh, I know some of them were off. I can't remember if this one was off. Okay. Was one of them off? Okay, let me ask it this way. Out of all of them that you got, were any of them off by more than a couple minutes? I believe one of them was. And Might how? Have been this one. I, don't, I can't remember how far it was off. Okay. Was it off? Uh, okay, that's fine. Well, so what happens, they, the store knows their cameras are off. So when they go to pull the video, they correct the time. And they, they correct the time when they go to pull it. So if it's really 1 o'clock and it's showing 11 o'clock, the store knows to tell the evidence tech, hey, you got to back it up or forward. Okay. okay. Thank you for clarifying that. So just to make sure, were any steps taken to make sure that the video you were getting when it wasn't based on transactions, like at Hollywood Casino and Kroger, were the actual transactions you were looking for? Yes, okay. yes. All right, now, based on that last video we saw, um, did you observe or, did you observe how the person that had used Rachel's card left the area? Yes, walked uh, westbound on Main Street, crossed northbound to the north side of uh, Main Street, and I believe it's the intersection of 18th and Main. There's a bus stop, and appeared to get on the bus at that location. And was that on one of the other camera angles? Yes. Okay. What, if anything, did you do once you saw on that video that he took the CODA bus? I made contact with CODA, uh, their security, and attempted to get it on board or outside camera surveillance. Okay. Uh, did you have any luck with that? No. After you got all of these bank records and the surveillance put together, did you contact somebody at BCI for assistance? Yes, I did. Who did you contact? Jennifer Leister. Who is Jennifer Leister? Uh, she does, uh, she's a crime analyst. Uh, she does digital forensics. Uh, she does quite a bit of work. Um, she, she could put anything together. It has to do with cell phones, uh, cell phone numbers, data off of cell phones. Okay. Uh, and did you give her some other, uh, or ask her to do some phone work in this case as Yes, well? I did. We'll get to that, uh, but I want to talk about the bank and surveillance records. May I go charge? Okay. Detective, I've given you what's been previously marked for identification as States Exhibits M1 through M4. Take a minute to look at those for me, please. Sorry, I had to turn the lights up too soon, Your Honor. Uh, and actually, I probably should ask a couple questions before I do that. Um, <laughs> do you recognize states exhibits M1 through M4? Yes, I do. What are those? Uh, those are different locations and times and snips from surveillance on a map showing the different locations and times of the card usage on different dates. And are those the documents that uh, you asked Ms. Lester at BCI to put together for yes. you? Yes. Uh, and did, after you reviewed them, did they uh, appear to be fair and accurate representations of the surveillance and the bank records that you reviewed yourself and that you just told this jury about? Yes. Do you have permission to publish? Any objection? You okay. All right, so State's Exhibit M1, what date is this for? This is for the 28th of January, 2018. Okay, now can you just explain for the jury, I see something, a bubble that looks like it's in an orange or red up at the top. That'd be the residence of Miss Anderson. And then just explain for the jury, uh, 
You don't have to go through all the specific times, but very generally, what are the blue bubbles? Okay, that's going to be the location with the times that the uh, debit card was used. And we have some other images there. Yes, those were uh, still images I gave to Miss Last Leister to add to the uh, the exhibit. Okay. Now we we talked about and reviewed more than two uh, pieces of surveillance for this date. Did she select just two of them to put on there? Yes. Okay. Moving on to State's Exhibit M2, what is that? Uh, it's going to be for January 29, 2018. Yeah. And it's going to be the same mapping uh, showing uh, Ms. Anderson's residence right here and the home of uh, Anthony Pardon right here, along with uh, the different locations of where the card was used, along with the times. It appears we have some surveillance from uh, the Kroger and DSW listed on here, photographs? Yes. State's Exhibit M3. That is going to be for January 30th, 2018. It's going to be another mapping. Um, this time it shows, obviously, the residence given by Anthony Pardon right here at 1338 East 15th and the Fine Food Mart at the times the ATM was accessed using the de uh, Rachel's debit card. And State's Exhibit M4. <clears throat> that is going to be uh, February 1st, 2018. Again, it's going to be uh, mapping showing the location where the debit card was used at the pick and go and the times, along with uh, surveillance footage right there. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. So at this point, though, we're at the very beginning of February. I know we jumped ahead to that map. When did Ms. Lester put those together for you and including your suspect's address? Oh, uh, that was after the arrest. Okay, so walking back a little bit, we've talked about gathering the surveillance from the 28th, 29th, 30th, and 1st, and then we have you talking to Mr. Sleet, identifying him on the 6th. Yes. I should have asked you, once BCI collected all of that evidence at Rachel's home, on the 28th into the, or I'm sorry, the 29th into the early morning hours of the 30th? Yes. What happened to that evidence? Uh, they obviously documented, gave us a log of everything that was collected, and at that time, Detective Welsh and myself took it directly to the property room and turned it in. Okay. And did you or Detective Welsh then make requests of the Columbus Police Department Crime Lab with regards to those evi that, yeah. hmm, that evidence? Yes. Okay. So at that point, did the lab have, or the property room have, all of the pieces of evidence that have been collected from Rachel's? Yes. So as you're gathering all of this surveillance, talking to people like Anthony Sleet, were you and or Detective Welsh interviewing other people? Yes, there was other people interviewed. Did those include people that were in her life? Yes. Uh, how about John Kennedy? Did you guys talk to him? Yes, he was interviewed by Detective Welsh. And did you make sure, or Detective Welsh make sure, uh, you know, we use words like alibi. Did you make sure that his whereabouts for the time Rachel was missing until she was found were accounted for? Yes. Did he have somebody he was with or a place he was that you could verify? His wife. He was with his wife. And we saw you collect that swab from Anthony Sleet's mouth. Yes. Did you do that also for John Kennedy? Yes. You may. And I should have asked, now that we talk about Mr. Sleet again, um, you took that DNA and you said you sent it in for comparison yes. to the things at Rachel's house. That's correct. Uh, was his DNA located on anything in Rachel's house? No. Anthony Sleet? That's correct. Was it located anywhere on her body or the bindings? No. Uh, I'm showing you State's Exhibit N4. Again, very similar. Uh, yes. And is uh, what is N for? What is it? State's Exhibit N for. Oh, I'm Who's sorry. It's John. I'm sorry, okay. Jonathan Kennedy. Okay, so the his so DNA. From, yes. We keep talking over each other. So I'm sorry. Yell at us. I'm sorry. Uh, Jonathan Kennedy's DNA from his mouth. Yes. Okay. And did you turn this into the lab? Yes, I did. 
Now, as the lead detective, you got all of the lab results back from people, right, or from the lab. Yes. Was John Kennedy's DNA found anywhere on her body or the bindings? No. Okay, we also heard about, uh, earlier, the jury heard about somebody named Sean Griggs, an ex-boyfriend. Yes. Did your Detective Welsh uh, determine his whereabouts for the time that uh, Rachel was missing and unaccounted for? Yes. Had he even been in town? No. Did you guys follow up on other tips, including, um, we've heard about creepy neighbors, somebody she knew named Rashid, different people like that. Did you guys uh, chase down those leads? Did I get that? Oh, we found out where she was playing basketball in the country. Okay, and how about other people in the area? Did you guys at least try to look into that or investigate that? Yes. All right. Uh, also, um, her brother, John Anderson. Yes. Did you guys get the DNA from his mouth? Yes. Showing you what's been marked for identification as States Exhibit N3. What is N3? It's the uh, oral swabs of John Anderson. And every time you say oral swab, you mean where you take his DNA from Yes, that's the And was her brother's DNA found anywhere on her body or the bindings? No. You mentioned Jennifer Lester, uh, and you had given her some other jobs. <laughs> Did you obtain uh, Rachel Anderson's phone records? Yes. And later in the investigation, after the defendant had been identified as a, su a suspect, his records as well? Yes. And what did you do with those records once you obtained them? I gave them to her, to Jennifer Lester. May I, Your Honor? You may. I'm showing you what has been previously identified as State's Exhibit <coughs> S1. Is that a disc? Yes. Did I show it to you before you testified? Yes. Uh, and uh, did it have both of their phone records on it? Yes. The records you sent to Jennifer Lester? Yes. Okay. And she did her analyst plan? Yes, she did. Okay. At some point, so now you're, you're getting all this information, you're sending things off. At some point, did the lab reach out to you? Yes, they did. With a lead? Yes. Um, had, did they provide a name to you based on an investigative tool they have from the testing of the property? Yes, they did. What was that name? Anthony Porton. And do you see the person, Anthony Pardon, um, that the lab identified uh, and that you later investigated here in the courtroom? Yes. Can you identify what he's wearing, please? Uh, he's wearing a black jacket uh, with a button-up shirt underneath it, glasses. Your Honor, would the record reflect he has identified the defendant? Uh, the record shall so reflect. After the lab gave you that name, were you able to locate him? Yes. What did, did you have him taken into custody? Yes, we did, had him arrested. Okay, uh, where was he when he was arrested? Uh, leaving the residence on East 15th. Okay, uh, on foot, on a bike? In a vehicle. Okay, he was in a vehicle. Um, during the course of your investigation, had you been able to determine whether or not he had spent any time in a southern state? Yes, oh. spent some time in Georgia. Okay. Lived in Georgia for a while? Yes. Okay. You mentioned uh, the residence and the car. We previously heard from Agent Durst. I'm going to do these as a group, if you don't mind. Um, Agent Durst. States Exhibits G1, G48, and G52. 
56. Let's do those first. Okay. okay. As a group, where are those three photographs from? From the home at Deborah Party. <clears throat> I don't know that we need the lights, Your Honor. We saw these yesterday, and I want to do a couple other things if you don't mind. We have up on the screen State's Exhibit G1. What is that a photograph of? Deborah Parton's home. It's a, I know it's a little bit tough to see, but uh, I'm going to bring you some of these items. Okay. What is depicted in G48? It is going to be the hat, uh, similar to the hat that she was wearing in the surveillance videos, and her cell phone. Now, at this point, um, had you continued to stay in contact with Agent Durst? Yes. So when he goes to a place like this, how does he know what to look for? Uh, phone contact. And there's other that our sergeant was out there as well. So, in contact with you? Yes. Oh, yeah, it was constant contact. Well, you didn't say who was talking about the phone. So I'm just making sure. All right, so I'm going to show you State's Exhibit H1, or at least part of it. Uh, what is this object out of State's Exhibit H1? A hat from Deborah Pardon. Okay, and did this hat look familiar to you? Looks like the same hat worn in the surveillance videos. Okay, the ones we just saw? Yes. As well as? Cash out voucher for Hollywood Casino. Okay, also in H1. And then, Miss Van Sealing, would you advance at one for me? One photograph. Thank you, sorry, I don't have a ticker. Uh, States Exhibit G56. What was of note in this photograph to you? Uh, the city trends, price tags. And why was that of note to you? Because that's where the debit card was used that was taken from Rachel Anderson. Okay. And I have um, State's Exhibit H3. Uh, what is inside that envelope? All of the same, same uh, items that were in the photograph. Okay. And where were all of these items located? Deborah Carden's home. And through the course of your investigation, were you able to determine whether or not the defendant stayed at this residence from time to time? Time to time, yes. Um, so we've only shown a few of these photographs, um, but we heard from Agent Durst and he talked about collecting evidence and taking photographs, but was that at your direction? Yes. Did you obtain search warrants to search the house and the defendant's car? Yes. Um, and did Agent Durst go through uh, the vehicle as well? Yes, he did. May I? You may. I have some of the photographs from the I series. I1. I-12, I-22, I-30, and I-31. Okay. As a group, what are those photographs? Items collected from uh, the vehicle that Mr. Pardon was stopped in and arrested out of. Okay. Uh, I-1, maybe a little bit, Your Honor, please, thank you. I-1. That's a vehicle that he was stopped in and arrested out of. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, located? That is located at our impound lot right there. Similar procedure with, uh, like you guys did with Rachel's car? Yes, that's correct. I-12. That is the interior of the same car. Um, and I think there's an object under there. Yeah, is there a cell phone collected? Cell phone. How about I-30? 
522. That's looking in the back seat of the same vehicle from the passenger side. And uh, there's a hat similar to uh, the hat worn in the surveillance videos. And you're talking about the surveillance videos. With Mr. Pardon. I want to show you before we move to the next picture. States Exhibit J3. What is that? Same hat recovered from the vehicle. And did that appear to be consistent <clears throat> as what you saw in the surveillance? Yes. States exhibit I-30. That's the same hat. And I-31. Those are gloves similar to uh, the gloves worn in the surveillance video, the same markings. Okay. Um, thank you, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. Ross, I think this is a good time for us to take the afternoon break. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, I need you back in the jury room right around 3.30. Again, remember the admonitions that I've given you with respect to discussing this case among yourselves or with anyone else. All rise for the jury. Very good. See everyone back right around 3.30. Thank you, 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 Thank you,